Hey guys, tonight's episode is going to be a little bit different, so if you want to join in on the fun, make sure you follow along with the questions and comment down below wherever you're at. Facebook, YouTube, SoundCloud, Spotify, we're not on those ones yet, but Facebook or YouTube, make sure you go down there and comment with your answers to this. We'll be in those sections replying back to y'all. Thanks. Welcome to Caffeine and Nicotine, a podcast where we talk about things, hit our vapes, and drink coffee. I'm Tiberius. And I'm Rain. Here's a conversation. Tonight, let's play Top Fives. I'm not sure that we need to explain the rules of Top Fives. Okay. Maybe we'll hit on applicable ones if we run into them. But it seems really self-explanatory. Yeah. And it's like the biggest one to include is top fives are are impermanent. Okay. Because like, like people's top fives change. So like if you ask somebody their top five favorite songs, it's going to be different than if you ask them two months from now. Right. It's... Okay. So all top five lists, there's lightning and thunder out there in case... <laughs> That gets on the recording. I hope it does. I hope so too. Um, so top five lists are present based, present moment based. Yeah, yeah, because I've run into difficulty a lot with that one, where I'm like, I don't know if these are my actual top five favorite movies, but like I'm feeling them right now. Yeah. Yeah. So. All right, works for me. <clears throat> so let's just uh, do the thing. You don't have to say jump right into it. Oh, I did so much. (laughs) Let's just jump right into it. Um, Top five, number one. What? Oh, who wants to go first? You. Me? Yes. Okay, well, I'll ask myself. (laughs) Top five, number one. Oh, wait, I thought you meant, like, for asking a question. No, if you ask, somebody else answers first. That's. Otherwise, it's going to be feels weird. Perfect. (laughs) Um... What are your top five favorite dog breeds? Um, pit bulls. Nice. Solid choice. Big fluffy teddy bear dogs. Big fluffy, um, is that Chow Chows? Yes. Oh, Chow Chows. Um, Alaskan Huskies. Hmm. Or maybe Siberian Huskies. I don't know, whichever ones tend to be more blackish. I think that's Siberian, isn't it? I'm not sure. <clears throat> um, Black Husky sounds awesome, though. Yeah. Especially if they have the different color eyes, which yeah. happens a lot in Huskies. Oh, they're awesome looking. Um, the Jamaican looking dogs. <laughs> <laughs> the Commodores. <laughs> sure. K O M O D O R. They're amazing. <laughs> How do they even see through those things? They're like. Fluffy mops. Right, I do have questions about that. Like, I want to just talk to an owner of a Commodore and be like, how did... Your dog has to run enough things sometime, right? Like, occasionally... Maybe they just run so fast that it, like, breezes out their eyes. <laughs> I don't know. I don't know. Because I can't works. save you in the house if you're just yeah. walking. Like, you just bump into a table or something, you know? Like, it's right above your field of being able to see. <sighs> And my last one might be weird, but I think, like, big mutts. Like, just, just mixed up big puppies. Okay. So, yeah. Is that all fun? Yeah. Okay, I got stuck on the Commodore <laughs> fun end of tables. <laughs> <sighs> Perfect. Well, I know what YouTube videos are searching like. Yo. <laughs> <laughs> Alright, so I guess it's my turn on that one. My top five dogs. Hmm. Well, I like Newfoundlands because they look like big old brown or black bears, depending on the color. I would prefer a black one because that is so much like giant black energy, just like monster almost. And just, oh, I'm actually a floof. I just live in your house and you own a bunch of my drool. To get a giant black dog, can we call it Black Panther? <laughs> Probably, yes. Awesome. Um, Salukis, which are kind of greyhoundy ish. 
Okay. Um, they look like African <laughs> greyhounds, essentially. Um, I'll show you pictures of it later. Um, I, I don't know if I ever thought I would have said this before having Bella, but a beagle is definitely now in my top five. She's made her way into my heart. With that ridiculous bark, that full body like bay. Um, two more. What sort of. Let's see, I want. What sort of guard dog? He's got like pits, he got rats, he got. Rhodesian Ridgebacks would be cool. Like lion hunting dogs and then to round out the group let's go with the afghan hound which is similar to a saluki much slower and way longer hair they're like the ones with the yeah flowy. i think i've seen what you're talking about i don't know they look too like pretentious and snooty i don't know that i could hang out with a dog like that I heard that if you me. brush them regularly, <laughs> like the hair doesn't grow all the way down to the ground, like it breaks off sooner. And so they're, they end up being like those, the coats that go like halfway to the ground mm -hmm. or whatever. And I feel like that looks like the sort of Afghan hound I could hang out with, you know, not mm -hmm. too, not too, nose isn't too far up into the air sort of thing. I don't know, those Jamaican dogs seem like the last posh for Yeah, that's pretty cool, they are. <laughs> I mean, maybe they just need to hang out. Maybe they're part of the same group, you know? The stoner version of them. <laughs> that is some intense thunder. Yes. Yeah. All right, what's my next? You get to ask this question. I don't know. Um, top five places you've been. All right, top five places I've been. Is it, are we talking about cities or just local? Locations Anywhere, within a city. Either. Um, or I guess the state was what I was looking for, actually. Um, I guess let's go with specific places you've been okay. in, the, in anywhere. Like by this waterfall. Or, yeah. Yeah. Um, the roller coaster park Cedar Point is on there. That was. I just didn't know that was a thing until a few months before. Is we that went. the one that's in the mountains? Um, it's yeah. right next to a lake, one of the okay. Great Lakes, I believe. Hmm. Yeah, it was. That's what I'm thinking of. It was ridiculous. Like just a whole park full of roller coasters didn't make sense to me. And I got there, and I'm not a huge roller coaster person, so I only rode maybe four or five of them, you know. And I rode some of them a couple times, but it was just a the concept blew my mind. Yeah. Like, it just had never never occurred. Um, so that was amazing. Uh, so there's a, I mean, it's hard because a lot of these are context dependent, right? Like they're, the place themselves isn't great. It was more like what happened there. Yeah. That's, right? that's fair. Um, there's a lecture hall in the, I don't know what it's called now. It used to be the Westbrook music building. I think it got changed. There was some like donations or something and but there's a lecture hall on the first floor it's right in like the center of the building and it was where i did my junior recital it was where i shit my pants before the acapella performance that we had during that <laughs> summer camp it was like so many things have yeah. occurred in that room that it just has this spot in my heart where like, still, I don't know. It's just amazing. I would go back there and just hang out there and, like, do some writing, do some work for, you know, the things I have going now, if I could, if it wasn't, you know, nine hours away from here and completely impractical. Don't look at me like that, woman. <laughs> We're not going. Adventure time. Adventure time. <laughs> uh, sorry, that took way too long. So Cedar Point. No, uh, part in that's West part of the top five game. Okay, fair. Um... So I think I would like it more now because I could turn back at any point. But there, when I was a kid and we lived in California, we went to, uh, I think it was the Monterey Bay Aquarium or something. 
Um, whatever they have, there was a big water and animal feature up there, and which um, isn't actually the important part of the story. The drive up there, there's apparently two main routes you could go. One was like a highway, and then one was on the side of a goddamn mountain, and that was the one we took. It was terrifying. I was perfect for life and time. <laughs> Thank you. Funny. Um, Fair. I I saw the lightning too, okay. so I was more common to Thank go there. Yeah, I, I, this is a super visual <laughs> podcast tonight, guys. <laughs> you, the lights, amazing. No, um, oh, they got deathly silent out there. Yeah. Someone turned off the weather. This is a goofy <laughs> podcast tonight. All right. Okay. What was I in the... Oh, the... the highway or... There's a road on the side of the mountain, and it kind of on the side of the cliff, and it, it just, you know, you look down to the left, and it's the ocean. And I think I would like it now, because I could at any point be like, we're going to go only to the point where you can't, like, go back, and, you know, you can't really make a U-turn mm -hmm. on this road. It's not, yeah. it's not that sort of thing. A lot of mountain roads are like that. It scares the shit. Yeah, exactly. And so, like, I would only go to a to a point of it where I could maybe take some pic, like the Instagram point. But I do think I would appreciate that much more. It was such a... I haven't been anywhere that looked like that um, so far, other than that place so far in my life. Um, so I would definitely mess with that again. Um... In a really weird way, NORAD, like I went in and did like the tour or whatever. Oh, really? Yeah. Our, our whole family did it, <clears throat> so I had worked there for that makes sense. a while. Oh, weird. And it was amazing and terrifying and like all of the things you think it would be, like being in a military base and the, the sections that you're even allowed to see inside a mountain. like. It's, yeah. there's just so many feelings that I had in there of like, oh, this is, it goes so much deeper. You know, I was a little kid, so I hadn't really done a lot of thinking about this sort of stuff. And so it was one of the first moments where I'm like, oh, this goes way deeper than I thought. Like, even just the ride from the entrance to where you're actually in a facility and not in the long hallway to go yeah. down there doesn't make sense. Like, it, my brain was like, oh, no, we're going to be trapped in the in the mountain like we're never going to get out again like if this collapses you know how much mountain we would need to get through to get out of the mountain like that's too much yeah i don't know if they make tools for that other than the ones sure that they have a million the... safeties yeah for any i'm i am 100 percent sure now but my little kid brain yeah. had no concept of that i just thought like there's a mountain above me it could crush me at any minute and then there was amazing technology in there. It looked crazier than the movies that I'd ever seen, you know, where they try to, like, showcase yeah. what the inside of these... No, it's way cooler. It is... It's way cooler. Like, I didn't even... I don't even know how to explain it. It's all, you know... And then it got terrifying when they said, like, yeah, if anything happened, we'd... You know, we wouldn't be able to save any of you. We don't have any, like, place for you guys in the... The thing, I don't remember who was saying that. I think it was my dad talking to someone, but it was just like, oh no, now I do want to leave. Like, <laughs> I yeah. liked the offices outside more. And, you know, on the way up, there was like turkeys and I think there was a bear or some craziness. So it was just a really weird day overall. Yeah. And then to have that moment in the mountain and be like, I'm like as far from the, like, outside of a mountain as I've maybe ever been. Like, I'm as deep into a mountain as maybe Eisenhower Tunnel is the only sort of thing I could have, you know, rivaled that. But even that isn't in the mountain as you're just kind of, like, passing through. But like, this is just a, it's a whole I facility. don't know which one that is. Um, up to the Rockies, like, up uh, near... I might have gone through the, that, because I remember going through an absurdly long tunnel at some point. Like, a few points throughout my life. Yeah, uh, it's... Just, what is that, west of, yeah, west of Denver on, I can't think of what the number of the highway is. But yeah, you go up there, it's like at the topmost point-ish of the mountain. It's kind of where they're like, yeah, we're done making a, a, a road up this mountain. We're just going to go the rest of the way yeah, through. Yeah, honestly, <laughs> like, the tunnel kind of freaks me out. 
So there's a lot of things that can go wrong. Yeah. But, like, driving up the mountain is definitely, like, more viscerally terrifying. Like, you just see your doom over that cliff, and it's like, oh, oh. See, I was going to go with, I don't even know how many I've done. I think I've only done three. Yeah, I think so. Um, I was going to go with, as as I was thinking about NORAD, Mm -hmm. with the mountains, like driving through uh, the Rocky Mountains as my, as one of them. But honestly, it's amazing, but it wasn't top five as in like craziest places for me compared to... What was his favorite? Not crazy. Oh, okay, yeah, I guess. <sighs> okay. <laughs> this is just, it's so hard. There's so yeah. many cool places. And well, for so many different reasons. And that's reasons. one of the reasons that the... <laughs> That that first rule exists is so that you don't get hung up on like, well, this is my be all end all thing, and then you can think of things later. Yeah, it's fine. we'll just have, and then you can come back and do more later. Right, we can have like amendment. Things. It's like six through ten now. Um, uh, so the other side of the Rockies, when you're in like the desert, that stretch of states in the southwest, and. There's that one section of, I wish I knew highways, but if you've ever driven from, say, Colorado, Colorado's direction through to, like, Nevada or California, you Is probably... Is I-5? I'm not sure. I don't think I would even know by recognition. I would have to look at an actual map. But it is... There's that stretch where it's like, no gas... Or facilities for a hundred miles or some shit like that. And then it's some of the most beautiful, like, desert environment ever. So it was terrifying. Because it's like, yeah, I hope nothing goes wrong. Um, Because, you know, there's a decent amount of people going through there, but you still have to rely on people actually stopping for you. It's like, I hope nothing goes wrong. But it was the most gorgeous desert I think I'd ever seen. Like, the the curves up through there and the... It gets all high up and you can kind of see down in the canyons and stuff like, ah, beautiful. So that, whatever that stretch of desert is, I'm sure someone will know um, on which highway it is, but it, it, you know, you dump out of the the Rocky Mountains, it's kind of boring and just flat, blah desert for a while. It's not I-5, by the way. I looked it up. I-5 is the one I was thinking about. I thought it... One a different way, but it goes straight up and down mm. on the west coast. Okay. Um, <clears throat> yeah, that's that was just a gorgeous spot. And I'm not... I guess for me it was weird because I had never thought of the desert as beautiful in any way. Yeah. I'm not a huge fan of <laughs> just... I mean, most of the things I don't like happen in the desert. Like, there's a lot of poisonous things, a lot of prickly things, a lot of, like, right. you know, like all the things that I'm really... All the... the sand, dust. you know, like, dirt, sand, dust, like, a lot of these particulate matters that, like, I have, like, textural issues with, like, yeah. that's basically what the desert and the beach are made of, <laughs> you know, like, and so I wasn't a big fan, but just driving through there, not having to touch any of this dirt, just watching it buffet the, the windows and stuff was amazing like looking down into these canyons that seemingly were too close to the side of the highway to like make sense to not have like guardrails or whatever but hey we all made it through so it couldn't have been you know, guardrails that are a joke anyway <laughs> yeah <laughs> um and then lastly i don't think i'm gonna go with the mountains i'm gonna go with So, we went down, my family went down to Florida, like Disney World, and then we went down to like Mississippi for family a few times, right? And as you're driving through the south, we do this in the summer, like some vacation. And as you're driving through that like southern stretch in those months, there was this phenomenon that would occur where like every afternoon you'd get these... You know, sometimes it was like 20 minutes, sometimes it was like an hour and a half-ish of just dumping rain on you. Mm-hmm. And and it was, we drove through there a few times as a kid, maybe, I'm thinking of like three, four separate trips. And it happened every time yeah. that we drove through these states. 
And it was amazing because, like, the trees and the sort of stuff out there is so different than what most of the Midwest, which is where I yeah. spent the majority of my life in Nebraska, Colorado. I've been out in California, but that was a brief period of time. And, like, I've been in Wyoming and stuff. And, and California is actually kind of similar to Colorado. It's much closer than the – at least the places I was at in, like, Southern California, there was – this, it was a lot similar, more similar than the South is yeah. to the Midwest. Yes. There were definitely some differences um, in, especially like I'm talking about mostly the plant life that we were looking at yeah. during this weather. But the trees were just beautiful. Like you're going down this highway and the trees kind of almost created a canopy over oh, the highway. Like it's that. too wide for them to physically yeah. do that. It's, you know, there's a median in the middle of it and mm-hmm. everything. But they're definitely old giant old trees on the side of this highway and you can if you look into them some of it you can see fallen ones and you can see all this this beautiful wildlife animals and stuff in there and i remember my siblings being a little bit freaked out because of how hard it was raining like it went from zero to yeah i was actually gonna say like i always think about those experiences from when i was younger and wonder how much the different they were from like the adult perspective so, like, your parents had to drive through that. Right. <laughs> like, so, like, way more stressful. That, yeah, that looks so much different. Than, As the person in charge than, like, of like, a kid's like, oh, look how nice this is. <laughs> yeah. I think about that with fog almost every time I drive now. Because mm. I'm just like, oh, my God, when I was a kid, I loved it when it was foggy out. And we'd be in the car and we'd be driving and I'd be, like, just so excited that was foggy. Oh, and I'm sure all of, like, any grown-up that was driving me listening to me, like, go on about how <laughs> great it was that it was so foggy. I was like, I fucking hate this. Like, right. I can't see shit. The lights only make it worse, but I have to have them on. Like, <laughs> this fucking sucks. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Yeah, that's that was one of them. I don't really know what stretch of any highway or you know which one that was. I'd have yeah. to probably ask my parents, but it's just gorgeous yeah, down there. Amazing. I like a lot of the the wildlife that lives in like those southeastern states. A lot of the the trees and plants are yeah. just so friggin' beautiful. I have nothing against Colorado wildlife. Like I'll stick in the mountains and just adore the nature views that we have i don't know i do to some extent because like there's just not enough like plant life and moisture here for me like i want more of that yeah (laughs) it's hard for me here being a mermaid (laughs) (laughs) it's rough so far from the (laughs) next so it was five yeah i think so yeah all right so my first one is um, this river in Wisconsin. I don't remember the river. It's in Stevens Point, Wisconsin. Um, but we used to play at that river all the time, completely unsupervised by adults because it was the nineties. <laughs> I have no idea. Like thinking back on it, I was just thinking because like we used to catch crayfish and like yeah. hang out and like make the crayfish fight. We used to jump jump off this like little bridge. Um, that went over the river that you definitely weren't supposed to jump off. <laughs> For sure dangerous. But, like, we did it a lot. Um, so, yeah, that was one of my favorite places growing up. Um, along that same vein has to be the gravel pit. Oh, Lord. <laughs> that we also went to unsupervised. We rode our bikes there almost every day. Um... We used to climb on top of the giant gravel hills and, like, rock hills and play King of the Hill and push each other down, like, 30-foot-high hills awesome. of gravel and rock. Yeah. Wholesome, were safe, super safe. fun. We're having a great childhood. <laughs> Shout out to Bob, Bob's Burgers. Um, yeah, that place was amazing. Um... And then uh, I-5, um, going into Oregon, you're kind of going, like, up a mountain, and they've got all of the, uh, they're not pine trees, what are they called? They're, like, similar to pine trees, but they look like this. Oregon's got them on their license plate. Oh, what are they? I am not sure, but I know where I can picture them in my head right now. 
And of course, all the people listening could appreciate they go like this. Just Super that visual. visual podcast. They look like several triangles stacked on top of each other. <laughs> <laughs> um, <sighs> but yeah, it's just this really surreal, like, gorgeous view. Um, another one, number four? Mine four already? Gravel Pit River I five. Yeah. Yeah. Um Douglas Fur. Okay. At least that's what's on That makes sense. That sounds like a thing I've heard before. <laughs> um Number four has to be the uh lake my uncle has a house on. Um it's one of the smaller lakes, I think in like Grand Rapids. Wisconsin. Okay. Um, I say small, but it's like small for a Wisconsin lake. Right. So, so yeah. huge. <laughs> um, Different standards. Yeah. <laughs> we call Prospect Lake a lake in Colorado. <laughs> and it's that like, pond. yeah, it's like a mile wide pond. You can see all edges of it from anywhere. <laughs> it's yeah. ridiculous. It's all like. Um, Lake snobs here. <laughs> <laughs> uh, but yeah, I just, I had so many fun experiences on that lake. Like, I learned to ride jet skis and hung out with my uncles and was a part of house parties that I probably shouldn't have attended <laughs> in the 90s. <laughs> um, <laughs> yeah, it was, it was amazing. And they had, like, sand and everything, so it almost felt like you were on the ocean. It was mm. really nice. Oh, that's quite cool. Yeah. Number five, I'm tied between a few things, but since I already did a lake one, I won't do another lake one. <laughs> um, if I did, it would be like a boat, but I'm not doing that. Um, Rose Garden and Eugene, um, they've got like this really old, crazy looking tree in it. And it's surrounded by just like, I don't know, probably like a hundred rose bushes. So if you go in the spring, it's just like, it's so gorgeous. Mm -hmm. um, and it's part of like the main park and you can just walk through there anytime you want. There's no like huh. fee or anything. It's just part of their ridiculous park situation. Yeah. It's so amazing. Not a huge fan of roses, but I feel like in that context, I yeah, would be. Yeah, I'm not either. Roses are by far not my favorite flower. Sure. But, like, in that context with this, like, giant old tree in the middle of it, and there's just a bunch of roses and this beautiful path, mm -hmm. and then, like, a few weeks after that, all of the petals start to fall, so there's just, like, thousands of petals, like, flowing through the park every time the wind blows. It's amazing. Sounds awesome. Um, let's do one more. Yeah. Uh, we've done dogs, we've done favorite places you've been. Um, let's go with jobs you think you'd be good at? Hmm. This one seems difficult. Alright. Um... Horticulture, horticulturist. Okay. And it can be things that we're like either partially in already or just like on our way to be doing. Like yeah. If, you know, if plans work out well. Um, you don't have to take out things you work on. Yeah. Uh, so that. Um, like a political PR. Okay. Um, like the face of it or like the, the person who like writes, say these things, yeah. don't say these yeah, things. Yeah, because I, I wouldn't want to be like in front of cameras or doing any of that or anything. Okay. I just want to be like, hey, this is your best next move. Like, this is the thing that you say to get these people on your side. Or, like a strategist. Yeah. Okay, yeah. Um, 
I can think of a lot of things I'd like to do, but I don't know about like would be good at. That one that makes it a little harder. Um, an artist like a. I feel silly because I don't know what the actual word is for it, but like when you make things out of clay, what would that be called? Like a potter? Yeah, uh, that was the word that came to my head. I was like, right, but I don't feel like what that's is quite your profession? Right. I'm a potter, so. Yeah, <laughs> like I like to make things like that with my hands. Um, awesome. Maybe a therapist? Yeah. Just been through a lot. I feel like that helps <laughs> therapists. Like, um, I'm struggling to come up with the last one. Wayne is starting to get intense. Both of the rings. Yeah. <laughs> um. Ooh, maybe like a seamstress. I really like making skirts and stuff. Okay, yeah. Seems yeah. legit. Um. So, okay. I think anywhere from elementary to high school, math teacher. I think I could do that well. I like math a lot. And I'm very passionate about the ways in which math <laughs> apply to everyday life. And I feel like I can contextualize a lot of the seemingly useless things that you have to learn in the standardized curriculum. Um, so there's that. Uh, radio host, I think I would do a good job. As, oh, you really would. Like, yeah. Smooth jazz, you know, <laughs> sort of thing. Like that seems Perfect. like it would be so much fun. That sounds like a smooth jazz person. <laughs> like, it feels, it just NPR feels thing. right. And now, one <laughs> smooth jazz. Uh, yeah, so some sort of radio host, ideally for smooth jazz and like the late hours of the night. But even if it was like an NPR thing or yeah. interviewing someone or you know, running one of the shows. I think you should that. legitimately apply for NPR. I think it would be fun yeah. to get any any sort of radio job, to be yeah. honest. So that's definitely one of them. Um, hmm. Uh, I think a consultant when it comes to uh, small businesses would be a decent area, particularly in the marketing side of things, yeah. whether it be social media marketing or whether it be like on the ground, you know, signs, whether it be getting into interviews or places. Like I think that would be a fun thing to delve into. And I'm not that worried. You know, like a lot of that has to do with being rejected a lot for things and like getting a lot of no's before you get the correct yeses yeah and i don't mind getting having people saying no to me on things and like taking that feedback and adapting the process so i think that would be uh something that would work out well and i have some of the skills already practiced that i would need for that um We're gonna overlap on this one, but I think that uh, like a like a clinical psychologist, I think that would be something. I I'm confident that I'd have the ability to maintain distance from other people's circumstances and practice and get better at the skills necessary for like doing that sort of listening and that sort of like yeah. reflecting back at you know, all that. Um, also, it just seems like the most important types of problems and puzzles to solve. And, like, that's kind of what I spend most of my time doing. Is like, how can I learn and get better and master this thing? And you'll never get to the peak of mastering being a psychologist. That would be a, a fun, yeah. always improving thing. And then... 
this one is completely unrelated to the rest of them, but uh, a League of Legends coach. Oh, that's fair. In terms of like, <laughs> yeah, in terms of like the macro strategy, what mm -hmm. everyone, sh where everyone should be at which times, which objectives you should be moving towards, what you want to be doing for now in order to make sure that in the next 30 seconds, minute or two minutes, everything's set up for that actual plan. Um, and teaching people how to coordinate on those sort of strategies, I yeah. think that would do well. So, yeah, like those that. are the top five. Yeah. I had one thing that I wanted to point out about one of your sections of answers. All of your favorite places are terrifying places, like places that you said you were afraid of. <laughs> I don't know if you noticed that or not, but that's crazy. You like being scared. <laughs> 